We've talked before how the Silver Age of comic books is largely agreed to have started with showcase number four and the introduction of Barry Allen as the Flash. But what are the odds that someone could be struck by lightning and then doused in the exact chemical composition needed to give them super speed? Well, what if it wasn't an accident? What if the whole thing happened on purpose? <laughs> Welcome to Comic Misconceptions, a show that takes you into detail about the things you think you know about comics. I'm your host, Scott Nicewander, and the Flash TV show pilot aired yesterday, so of course we're going to talk about that. You guys really seem to enjoy the video I did on the real origin of the Fantastic Four a couple weeks ago, so with that in mind, I bring you the real origin of the Flash, with an issue that I assume DC has been trying to sweep under the rug since it was released. An issue entitled the real origin of The Flash, which is a bit on the nose, but you know. But first, a quick refresher on the original origin of The Flash in showcase number four from 1956. Barry Allen was a police scientist who was notorious for being late and working at a slow pace. One night at the lab, Barry is reading a Flash comic book featuring the original Flash, Jay Garrick, wishing he could be just like the fastest man on Earth. He approaches a shelf full of every chemical known to science, and a lightning bolt suddenly strikes him and bathes him in a certain few key chemicals. As he leaves, he discovers that he's traveling at incredibly high speeds and can seemingly see things happen in slow motion. Inspired by the comic book hero, Barry dons on some tights that he designed to fit inside his ring for easy access and becomes the Flash. Of course, different variations of this origin have appeared in comic books throughout the years, but you get the gist. But in 1967, a decade had passed since Barry's first appearance and DC wanted to retell his origin for newer Flash fans who were jumping on board to comics for the first time. But the origin they decided to tell was so radically different and bizarre that it's no surprise that it was almost immediately and purposefully forgotten. The Flash number 167 opens innocently enough with the Flash beating up some jewel smugglers with some kind of cool and inventive action, but then Flash catches on fire as his protective body aura is no longer shielding him from the immense friction that he endures from moving so fast. He jumps into the nearby harbor to put out the flames, and he emerges with a rather odd man waiting for him. The man introduces himself as Mopey, an initiate 10th class of the Heavenly Helpmates, whatever that means, and he explains to Flash that he was responsible for turning off his protective aura, as he was the one who gave Flash his powers in the first place. Flash argues that it was the lightning and the chemicals that gave him his powers, but Mopey says that the odds of that happening are 10 quadrillion billion to one, and a scientist like Barry should know better than to believe that something like that would happen by chance. The real story goes that Mopey's superiors assigned him to the task of giving one human the gift of super speed for a reason that was never explained. Mopey followed around Barry and found that he was worthy of the gift since he was honest, brave, and sincere. It was Mopey that then guided the lightning bolt down into the lab Barry was working in that had him crash into those chemicals and turn him into the Flash. Years later, Mopey's superiors discovered he made a mistake. Here we discover the first of many weird rules of the Heavenly Helpmates. The Initiate can only use objects that are owned by the Gifty to bestow the gifts. In other words, Mopey used the lightning bolt and the chemicals to give Barry his powers, but Barry didn't own those chemicals. The police department did. So now Mopey has to take away Flash's abilities because that's what the rules say to do. Barry actually contemplates the idea of not being the Flash anymore, but he decides it's better to not stop saving lives. So he has Mopey look into the laws a little bit, see if there's a loophole in there that will allow Flash to keep his powers. They find that in the case of a mistake, the Initiate can recreate the experiment that gave the Gifty their powers under certain conditions. In this case, Barry has to buy the chemicals that turn him into the Flash, and then they can remake the accident. Then we encounter another one of the weird rules. He can't buy the chemicals as Barry Allen, but has to earn the money to buy them as the Flash for, again, a reason that was never explained, and he has to do it in exactly 24 hours. This whole thing hinges on the idea that the Gifty would create a dual identity with the powers that Mopey gave them, which is kind of, I guess, a hole that I have in that logic. But I guess an easy way to remedy that would be you as Barry Allen giving your friend that money, and then your friend would give you as Flash that money back for doing something, because you have to earn it. So just do dishes really fast, or organize a DVD collection really fast, or open a door at regular speed. You have to earn the money. But instead, Flash puts out an ad in the newspaper that goes public the next day, and he is flooded with letters from people asking for his help. Letters that arrived that day, since he still only has 24 hours to complete this task, and that 
is some fantastic delivery time. He really only has to do one job, so Mopey selects it for him because that's a rule that, again, the reasoning for was never really explained. Long story short, the Flash does the job, buys the chemicals, and they reenact the experiment that gave him his powers. Just as Mopey is leaving, he wonders about Kid Flash, aka Wally West, who got his powers in a very similar way to Barry. The Flash realizes that maybe Wally was the one in Quadrillion Billion who defied all odds and received his powers naturally. The story ends there, and it's seldom referenced again. Now, there are so many problems with this issue, but the biggest one that I have is that it completely redefines the character from being science-based to being magic-based. We talked before that a lot of the Silver Age heavily focused on science for its heroes and their origins, even if it was wildly inaccurate science. Flash was designed to be a science-based hero. He himself is a scientist. And heck, they even have a standalone page in showcase number four dedicated to the science of speed. It just feels weird taking that aspect of the character and replacing it with magic, which is likely one of the biggest reasons why this whole Mopey business is largely ignored. Mopey was even brought back to poke fun at himself in Ambush Bug number three from 1985 when he starts listing off characters that he takes credit for creating. He helped guide Superman's rocket to Earth, he threw a bat through a window of Wayne Manor, and he even went over to Marvel and created Hulk, Spider man and the Fantastic Four amongst many others. So just ignore that whole video I did before about the real origins of Fantastic Four because this, this is it apparently. Mopey. Over the years, however, Mopey has been very sternly said to have never existed in the first place. Like in Who's Who, the definitive directory of the DC Universe number eight, on the page about Flash where it explicitly states, and I quote, an account alleging that the accident that gave Alan his powers was actually staged by a being named Mopey is entirely incorrect. They do try to slide Mopey into continuity in the life story of The Flash from 1997, but in a different way. The night Barry got his powers, he was investigating a new drug on the streets that the kids are calling Mopey. This Flash origin with Mopey is a little bit weird, but it does raise an interesting question. Should heroes be chosen by random chance or by intentional and deliberate decision? Let me know what you think in the comments, and let me know which Flash origin you prefer. And if you want to listen to our review of the Flash pilot with Ross from Comic Cinema, that will be available on Monday right here on YouTube or on iTunes and Stitcher if you want to go check that out. And thank you so much to the NerdSync patrons over on our Patreon page. You guys helped us get past our first big milestone. Thank you very much. You are amazing individuals. And I look forward to talking more about The Flash with you over there. And if this is your first time hanging out with us here at NerdSync, please do subscribe. We do weekly comic book videos just like this one every Wednesday, and we don't want you to miss out on any of it. I'm Scott, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram, and we'll be off next week, but we'll be back the following week with more things that you thought you knew about comics. See ya.